Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. Today's video is unfortunately probably the worst video I've ever had to make. And it is about a good mate of mine who is John John Robertson, who I've been driving with for the last four years and learned a lot from in regards to technical driving. Unfortunately, he has been diagnosed with brain cancer uh, the end of last year and he's battling that since. This unfortunately is a battle he really can't win. And then the last few months when we saw that really the illness started to get hold and uh, limited his movement and what he could do, I caught up with him on two different occasions and sat down, did some interviews with him. I also had him to tell me a little bit about his life and um, show his pet. And this video is a tribute to John John, a good friend of mine. And I think he is a remarkable fella and certainly one of these unique Australian characters. And I would like to capture a little bit about his life uh, on video for you. Uh, John, obviously very hard, you know, until, until last year, I think it was probably November, we pretty much drove together nearly every weekend. And then you called me and said, oh, look, I, you know, got to go to hospital for a quick little thing. It's going to be nothing big. And you're out for two weeks. But uh, t tell us a little bit what, what happened there. What, how, how did you detect that something wasn't right? I just had a small tremor in one ankle. I thought, oh, that's nothing. And then when the scans came back, it was, yeah, it wasn't good news, it was just, in, in December then, I think it was around that time, you pretty much were then diagnosed with glioblastoma, yeah. uh, I think it's called, which is the GBM, mo GBM the most aggressive form of brain yeah, cancer. Great, great form. There's, there's no coming back from it. It is just the matter of when, and most people are lucky to make it 12 months. Um, yeah, you, you certainly have been battling on and really making the best out of every day, really. And I really admire that. I, I have to say, John, I, I mean, I, you know, you, you have never let that slow you down. You have been out and driving on good and bad days. Yep, you just keep going while you still can. But with that disease, it just doesn't stop it just slowly keeps eating into you until it totally cripples you or does whatever it does it just it just shuts shuts you down I really uh, would love to hear a little bit how you got into four wheel driving and I believe you did a lot of uh, motorbike riding beforehand Yes, before four-wheel driving, I used to probably about eight or ten years racing dirt bikes, enduro dirt bikes, 
And then as time went by, I thought that too dangerous, getting too old, too silly. So I looked around for something else and decided to try the hand of four wheel driving. But with enduro riding, I managed to win an Australian title back in 1993. And that was probably the highlight of the enduro side of it. But that was always going to be a good passion, and it still is. And yet, I see even today for me. Yeah, you you never really gave that up until until you really had to. I mean, I I was amazed uh, last year, you know, knowing that you mm -hmm. were out on the dirt bikes in the Wadigans and driving these hard tracks there. It was... Yeah, it's, it's actually more fun than in a different way than full driving. It's constant on a dirt bike. It is just relentless, but a four wheel drive, you get to relax between one track to the mm -hmm. next track. So the adrenaline is not there all the time, but the makeshift is. And yeah, with the dirt bike riding, obviously you, you're constantly going to be on the ball. But you, the Australian Championship, as I have seen at your place, that was really only the highlight because you had boxes and boxes full of trophies. Um, mm. So it looks like you, you at some stage nearly won everything which was uh, around there. I finished everything. If not, you know, for club club events, and then you, once you get to a certain level, it's hard for people to go over the top of you and beat you, you because if you're out training every day, three, four times a week on your mountain bike, can that, it makes it just so hard for people to, to beat you. So John, how, how did you get then into four-wheel driving? I mean, we know that transition from dirt biking into four-wheel driving, but how do you start four-wheel driving? In a club or how did you get into it? Uh, I had a friend who was a dirt bike rider and he bought himself a four-wheel drive. So I thought, yep, that's not as crazy as dirt bike riding, but it's still getting you out in the bush and doing things. So joined the Toyota Land Cruiser Club and went on their club trips and then branched out or did, yeah, just any trips at all that were going, but mainly the two day trips, not the desert trips or anything like that, it was just the weekend or day runs, it was always a lot more fun than the other types of trips that people do. Yeah, you, you prefer the technical driving, huh? That was really, I mean, we have done one touring trip together to Tassie, but uh, I think you you like more that day, pure technical driving, huh? Yeah, it just, yeah, do your driving, turn around, come home again, and it's, um, you haven't got all the tents, etc. to set up. Um, in four-wheel driving, you also attended quite a few comps, is that correct? Many, many comps, probably since 1997, six maybe. I bought the Hilux in 1996 and basically every year since it's been in a competition in the various classes and coming from dirt bikes, it's just so much easier because you've got all the skills previously that a lot of people that just jump in their four wheel drive just for the comp don't have. Because you've been racing, it, it is just ingrained in you know when to go slower or when to pace yourself rather than, yeah, be. So you won Tough Truck and Willow Glen and all that stuff numerous times, is that correct? Yes, won the Nissan Trials three times in a row. Um, I won Willow Glen three times outright as well. Um, probably never out of the top five ever, as on average.
I dare to say that Hilux is the longest someone drove a vehicle uh, if you consider how many competitions it has done, what it all has done. So how long uh, do you have that Hilux for exactly now and driving that same car? I believe it was 1996 I bought it, mm -hmm. it the extra cab. Probably wasn't my first one. I had a dual cab before that, but I think the, the extra cab was from 96 onwards and just kept it maintained the whole time. Just, and I never ever did any major modification to it. The only major modification was to put the Jackaroo 4J X1 engine into it in the year 2000. And I got it totally engineered then with a new motor and a few little suspension mod with the engineer back in the year 2000. And I haven't tucked it since. It's just basically been the same high luck that as part break you replace them with whatever's in there. Just keep it stock. Stoppage. Obviously, you you downplaying it a little bit. There there are a few modifications done. I mean, you not go, went crazy, but uh, for example, you have crawler gears in the Hilux. What what ratios do you run? Um, they're just the standard crawler gear ratios. I believe the four seven four point seven ratios on it. So yeah, and it's got double diff locks in it, front and rear. Yeah, you raised a petrol tank, you, you changed the cross member a little bit, or is that flat? Uh... Uh, one cross member has been raised ever so slightly, so you can put a one piece tail shaft in it rather than the Hilux has come with a two piece, but it's all tucked up out of the way. It's... You drove the same vehicle for over 20 years, that uh, in my book, you know, that vehicle is an extension of you in a way, but what do you reckon makes that Hilux so good? Because you really show that you don't need huge flex. You consistently show with leaf springs in the rear and you know a moderate two inch lift that you pretty much drive everything and more um, in that old Hilux really. Yeah, well that's the idea. Just learn to drive the Hilux and put it where you want it to go rather than I know, I know what it's going to do before it even get up to a step. Yeah, just learn to drive it rather than have big flexi suspension. It, it's what I know. Where's that double drawn coming from? That was in a Gymkhana up at Milburdale. We, when I was in a club, back in the day. They says, oh, well, you gotta be matched with pairs, which was for the competition, right? And, well, long story short, they didn't know, remember my last name. They all remembered John, but they had to put something on the entry form for the second name. They couldn't remember Robertson. So they thought, oh, just put J John, John. Oh. And anyway, when I was going around the track, the, the announcer was reading off the his script and he says John John is now and then by the end of the event he was going John 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 and reckon the mates were just pissing themselves laughing at that name John John and it stuck huh so yeah it stuck when that, was it can you remember Milber the year Milbridale probably 97 96 wow. 98 If there ever was a symbiosis between man and machine, that would be John John and his trusted Hilux, which he drove for 26 years. And I dare to say there are very few people in the world who know their car as well as John John knows that Hilux. That's it.
Beautiful. Fun and games, Stefan. Fun and games. The other camping grounds up there in the corner, but um, the train might. Stop! Stop! Don't go back anymore. We're locked this way. First gear, go. On roll. Doing difficult technical driving, a good spotter is really paramount. John John was a brilliant navigator and someone I trusted 100% when he gave me directions to drive something. Nineteen ninety five, ninety four. John John's secret book. No, book. just maintenance. That's everything. Oh, that's a log book. Yeah, just the log book. New brake pad, front shoes, everything. Oh, with the kilometers. Okay, but you that's also right. have your tire pressure and everything in there. Oh, there's at the back. There's how to remove steering shafts. So, so what's what's it here? That's the tire height. As you hear, down goes 24, 6, 12, and then at 20, it'll be 605, and then at 12, it'll be 590, probably the one I've underlined, yeah. 595 was an optimum pressure yeah. for the grip and the height and the compromise. Just going to have a quick chat with uh, John Robertson from the All Terrain Club. Uh, John's lined up about to start the track. John, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, it was a very challenging track to start with, but once again, going to be a piece of piss for us, mate. We're going to go straight to the top, and that's going to be the way it'll always be today. That's all we like to see, a man with full of.
two little steps. Here they drop here, turn to carry them up for the outside of the bunting, and as they go, just lift them and put them through the bunting onto the left. Get them oh, up there, ready to go. On, right. the, on the left, on the left. Any little step, any step, any reach. That is paradise, John John. I know. I wish I had that size of garage. Mate, there's another one under the house. You can't. Mate, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Yeah. So, yeah, this is where I keep the highlights. That's where the magic happens. Yeah, if I go over there, that's just an old Yamaha. Yeah. This is very rare, a YZ. 250B which is it's the first monoshock basically made wow. it's this is a, the rare one, it's got the strap holding the tank on yeah. and I've had that since I think it's a 1976 and I bought it in 1976 Ah, the so day, it, the year it came out What, you restored that from scratch, John John? Ah, rust bucket Wow And I did everything myself, including rebuilt the engine. I did all the upholstery myself. There's a walking foot sewing machine upstairs I used. Um, yeah, it, it just um, yeah. everything painted it, panel beaded it, every everything myself. Tell me, what Falcon is that? What year? And it's an XB Falcon, 1973. Okay. Fifty one Cleveland V eight. Wow. Uh, and you put that all in? Yep, did the whole lot, just rebuilt it. Obviously I didn't do the machine work, but I got the machine yeah. back from the machine guys and reassembled it all, got the parts from America. How, how many hours, John John, did you put in that build? There'd be six months work before the assembly. Six and months full six, time? Full time, as in writing the hours down, eight hours a day for six months, as if you're doing a 40 hour week on it. I, it was all logged on my wall, how many hours I do, as if it was a job. Yeah. And then the upholstery was, I stopped basically, didn't count once I got to rebuilding, making the upholstery yeah. with the walking, with the sewing machine and that. Wow. Sunday morning, it's a pretty windy night, but we were nice and sheltered. John John MacGyver is doing some bush repairs. That's it. A little bit of glue. For his air mattress, which sprung a little leak. Hopefully it sticks to this canvas.
Yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. John, John, you hang in there, mate. You have been an inspiration, not just to me, I think to many other uh, guys I know. And yeah, thanks for the time driving with you, for all the knowledge you uh, shared with us. And um, I can only say, mate, uh, I personally will miss driving with you 100%. Um, yeah. I don't know really what else to say, might uh, was a pleasure knowing you, was a pleasure driving with you. Fun and games, Stefan. Fun and games.